he said yes initially, then he said no, but he's changed his mind again. So. That was too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> a man named Ron fights for Ottawa truckers. Quebec politicians think this group's a bunch of suckers. Two-way trade is not there, it's so obviously unfair. Decades later, the best city of Ottawa can do is pucker. Ron Barr, have a say your name. Of a week and I don't need a mic, that's for sure. A couple of things in a personal note. I wasn't going to talk today because I got a dog that's uh, 14 years old. He's like my kid and he's got about a day and a half left. And that's it. We got we to gotta put him down. Last Wednesday, I, uh, I was in Hamilton. I run four different businesses across the province of Ontario and um, I was visiting a friend of mine in Hamilton and we have another friend who I've stayed with many times in Burlington and I asked him and I fished with him for 20 years, and I said to my buddy, I said, have you seen Wibbly lately? He said, no, I haven't seen him. I said, that son of a gun's probably in his apartment, dead rotting. He gets called Thursday morning, he had been dead for a couple of days, found him in his apartment, and I'm just like, so I have the only key to his place, so I, I have to take off, so, you know, with my dog and uh, with uh, this buddy of mine, I'm a little bit uh, off, but uh, notwithstanding, I, it, uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate everybody for showing up. This is a great event, and... He's doing a great job, and Pat and Kim and uh, etc. You guys do a great job. I am the uh, general manager of the Greater Ottawa Truckers Association. I absolutely got the job because I ran for mayor in Russell. I ran at the last minute because of the fact that I couldn't apply to be a greater operator in my little community of Russell. So when I went and asked what kind of job I could apply for, it was either the councillor or the mayor. And I've always uh, the youngest general manager of a racetrack uh, at. Uh, uh, what, I think 42 years old. I've always ran my own businesses, so I was either gonna, you know, I wanted to lead the organization uh, for the uh, the town. They were 18 million dollars in the hole. They were a mess. Uh, so I ended up running, and um, you know, I really didn't have a chance. Uh, but I, I did what I could. I did it more for uh, making a little bit of noise. And uh, Ken Hill, the person that split the vote to install uh, the sign bylaw, broke the, the vote. Uh, he made it 3-2. Uh, he beat me by only four votes. So, uh, you know, it is what it is, a little bit of uh, consequence there. I don't know what I'm going to do uh, this year um, as well, or the next election. But getting back to uh, my role as the uh, Greater Ottawa Truckers Association General Manager and President, when I took over the organization, and you've probably heard this again, but I'm going to expand on it. 32, I find out uh, moving snow for the city of Ottawa, there was 32 companies that came in from Quebec that were allowed to be equal to an Ontario operator to move snow. It wasn't like they were coming in and being cheaper. They worked for the same uh, dollar rate that I had negotiated uh, and do so on an annual basis. So what we did is we took the, uh, the fight to um, uh, the media. We took it to the city. We had numerous meetings with the city, <coughs> politicians. I finally got a meeting with uh, the uh, Mayor Watson and his, uh, his group. Uh, and, and I'm going to tell you, they absolutely lied to us. They absolutely lied to us. Lied? Uh, Is that normal? Yeah. And, and, and they, Chuck, Chuck, they're like, I will call, uh, one day when I meet the mayor, I'm going to tell him he lied and he is a liar. And this is the reason why. Was, um, we went in there uh, to uh, tell them that we have sufficient amount of assets in Ontario to look after the snow. There was no need to bring in the Quebecer. One further bit, it was extremely difficult to go have even a truck go into Quebec from Ontario. They get harassed right away. I subsequently got a letter from uh, Minister Shirelli, who is the MTO minister, recognizing that, uh, that uh, he recognizes God as plight as, and the frustration of the inequitable position. Oh. So uh, basically what I've done is I've uh, met with uh, folks like Jack McLaren, uh, all the local uh, PC politicians in town, and, and even out in Cornwall and Pembroke to, uh, you know, because we have to bring some equity back, we have to bring a fairness back or some kind of mirror back, because it, it's, uh, right now it's, uh, it, it's extremely unfair. Uh, so what, uh, what we had a meeting with the mayor, uh, we told him our plight, they say we're going to work on it. We're going to get you meetings with the Ministry of Labor. Linda, Linda Je Jeffries at the time was the uh, Ministry of Labor for the province. Uh, everything was good. Finally, at the end of the meeting, he said, we've got to keep this out of the media. Because we, previous to that, on uh, that Monday, Tuesday, we were on Lowell Green. And Nick Vandergrad, he's the one that woke it up right there. Nick was the one that really did give him a like that. He woke it up. So it has resulted a Ron Corbett uh, article in The Sun. And uh, I, I'm listening Monday, and Nick's all over, pissed right off, and he's going. So I was first call, and I lit it right up with him, and I'm telling you, it lit for two days. Shirley was on, a lot of people were on. 
Long story short, so we go to, um, Mayor says, yeah, we're going to help you, we, we understand, boom, boom. I get a call a week and a half later, the Auditor General report's coming out, and we've got to give you a heads up, Ron, we're going to go to tender. We're going to tender the truck, in other words, the great Ottawa trucker, go to hell, we're going to open it up, and Eli El Shantiri, I'll never forget, he says, if, if a Quebecer's cheaper, they may get the work, and I said, you're going to have a war. And then I also warned them all. I said, number one, you've just put, uh, you, you're making it so uncompetitive for an Ontario company to compete with a Quebec company, they're going to likely be able to come in cheaper and get the work, but you're going to have a war. So they had to give me a call, and I got a call from Jeff Burns, Chief Procurement Officer from the city, an hour before Auditor General's report was going to be released saying that they could save $630,000 in snow removal. So again, we have a meeting with them, and I said, you know what, that number is absolutely... I, I don't believe that number. I think it's false. I said I asked them a question. Is that the whole department, roads department, encompassing the savings that could be realized? They didn't really know. I said I absolutely dispute the number. I crunched the math. I've done my math. I have an accounting background. I said, Jeff, it's just impossible. What they said to me, they agree. But when that Auditor General says something, they have to suck hold up to the guy and do whatever he wants, whether it's right or wrong uh, or another. So. What we're, what we're forced to do now is we have to now defend the city's uh, um, uh, goal of going to a tender route. I, I, I put them on notice uh, in a letter that, uh, number one, it's not like I can schedule an appointment to uh, have backhoes do a job. When Mother Nature snows, it is what it is. It's going to come. It could come for three days unannounced. It could come tomorrow. We're moving snow. So it's not like, so it's not like we're, we're all sitting there waiting. I said to them, if they switch to a tender process, what you're going to have is you're going to have 10 of the cheapest guys in the, in the town uh, putting in. What you're going to do is you're going to run into the problem the 11th, 12th, and 13th may not get work all winter. Because if, if it doesn't snow much, the first 10 guys are going to get work every single day. Yeah. But I said, when you get a catastrophic snowstorm like we've had this year, the 11th, 12th, and 100th, and 350th guy, which they have on the list right now, they're not going to make it worthwhile to have their uh, licenses, um, uh, uh, put license on the truck, insurance and all that. They're, they're better off to park them. And I said, you will have a biggest incident that you're, you'll ever realize in this city of Ottawa. But they don't seem to care. So what we've what we basically, uh, we basically done is, um, you know, what I hear right now with uh, Mr. Paul with those condoms, what I hear with the needles and all this crap, here they are, they support 350 trucking companies, as Shirley knows, in this community. Everybody gets anywhere. They've gotten around 15 to 16 shifts this year. Really a little bit of flavor. Everybody gets a little bit of a piece of the pie to sustain their operations until they move into the spring when it gets busier. What they want to do is they want to take that back. My fear is now, I'll get somebody from out of town that has 70, 80 trucks, shoves all of our local taxpayers aside for the sake of uh, saving a couple of bucks. And I'll never forget when, uh, what uh, Watson said in there. When I said, uh, I asked him two things. Mr. Watson, you got you got to fill in some blanks for you. What is the focus for bringing all these Quebecers and letting them move snow, letting them work for the city of Ottawa? Because there's a tremendous amount of people that work for the city of Ottawa from the, from the city of Gatineau that come over here. And I asked them, where's the net benefit? Where's the net benefit of a, a, a trucker from Quebec Coming over here, they don't hire here, they don't buy fuel here, they don't buy their tax, they don't do any, there's no net benefit. But what the city plays, they have what they call, from 1999, the Discrimination Act. And they shove that right in my face, which means they cannot discriminate against creed, all the crap there, ex and, and including geographical area. Which means, if somebody, if I go up and I want a job for the city of Ottawa, I wouldn't get one because I don't speak French, but notwithstanding, say I was bilingual, I went in and a Quebecer came in, we would be equal to get that job. And I also learned that there's a tremendous amount of uh, department heads are, that are from Quebec. So well, who are they going to hire? Yeah. Yeah. They're going to hire. So, so what we're doing is we're fighting the fight right now. We're not going to back down. Um, you know, I, I, again, when I, I was, I was going to leave because I have to uh, head out of town. But when I hear the stories about the condoms, and when I hear the stories about the needles, and I hear all the crap, I have, have, and I won't give you my handle when I, when, when I post on the Toronto Sun or the Ottawa Sun, but I harass, I harass the city of Ottawa right now. I, every time I get a chance to throw a stone, I will throw a stone because what is happening, what is happening is, I don't know, 
where they come out with the wasting our money with giving these needles. My goodness, I know a guy who's a diabetic who can't afford needles for a diabetic and he can go to hell. Yeah. But if you're a heroin addict, I don't, Andrew, and I don't know if you even if you are. No, no, I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> Swear in a Bible. Swear in a Bible. Go laugh, I got one of those. Yeah, I hear it. But, but a guy like, uh, if, if Andrew was on heroin, they would look after him. I, I, they would give him a nurse to, uh, to uh, pump it into a system. But if I'm a poor senior and need needles, you can go to hell. Doesn't happen. So, I applaud the group here. I've, I've also listened to Shirley. When I first met her, I was uh, at uh, Mr. Cameron's uh, event at the uh, Cornwall Hospital, and I'll never forget her sat there, and I heard this voice. Shirley, <laughs> where the hell is she? I thought she was a six foot four brute of a lady that carried the shit out of me. Here she is, this big there, and I thought, holy Christ, I love her life. She can swear a baby better than me. So I am told. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to piggyback with uh, with Shirley. Uh, Shirley apparently is going to come up with some rally because she's had enough. Love when she talks about Presto card and needles and condoms and this and that and this and that. And everybody that follows Shirley on the radio, what do they say? Wow! Wow! They're like, holy Christ! She doesn't get you motivated through the phone and want to pick it up and shake it, saying yes. But she's going to put a rally up. I'm going to I'm going to make sure my uh, truckers are aware that I will absolutely be in town. I don't care what day it is to support her because we have to go to the town hall and we've got to say to you, uh, together that we've had enough of the bullshit, pardon my language, it's bullshit, the waste, the, the, the fact that they ignore us, we've had enough. It's groups like this that we've got to go up there and say, you know what, politicians, enough is enough. Now I give, I give Jack credit, Tammy, uh, Tammy Hart credit. I remember, I remember the first time I saw her. She was sitting right across from, from uh, Serge when I did a little bit of speech, and I said, "Man, you got some, you know, you got some cojones to have." Because remember, I said he was toxic. Oh, you can make cojones. Make cojones. for big cojones. Big cojones. I'll say. I'll say. Yes. Trucks. What the hell happened? Block the bridges! Yes, block the bridges. We are, we are going we are going to do that. We are going to do that. We didn't think it was we didn't we didn't want to do it when we were in the throes of snow because it was just these guys are listen, my truckers have had the busiest year they've had in a number of years. I gotta let them go. Again, another thing what we've done, Tammy, is you know, we've got a lot of complaints from my truckers. I'm I'm the face for them. Anytime somebody in